We've reached the penultimate day of the Qatar test. Coming up tonight, Ducati have been painting the top of the timesheets red. Are they the factory to beat? You can't win a race at the start, but you can certainly lose it. Has Maverick Vinales found the formula? And they've kept fairly quiet so far. But are KTM in trouble? Or are the Austrian manufacturers simply boxing clever? We'll try and find out. Then going off to the medical centre and having those checks and finding out that he has got that two millimetre fracture in the right metatarsal of his foot. Now, you would imagine that's him done here in Qatar, but the team say otherwise. They do say he's going to give it a go in the morning, and possibly try and ride tomorrow for the final day of testing. So it's not all over yet for Alex Marquez here in Qatar, but after five crashes in four days, you can imagine what his confidence is like heading into the opening round of the year. Yeah, absolutely. The worst possible start to the season in many ways uh, for Alex Marquez. Uh, and Jack, it's, it must be a difficult and it must be a very uh, frenetic atmosphere down at LCR Honda because it's not exactly been a smooth test for Takaki Nakagami either. No, you're absolutely right. It's not been a smooth test for HRC full stop. Honda has suffered more crashes than anybody else here. Ten in total. The five we've mentioned for Alex Marquez. Two for Taka Nakagami over my right-hand shoulder. Stefan Bradl has suffered another crash today. Remember, he missed a whole chunk of action yesterday after hurting his neck. He went down again at Turn 1 today with Repsol Honda saying, or Stefan relaying to them, that it was an easier crash today, if there's such a thing. And, of course, Paul Espargo has suffered his first crash in the colours of Repsol Honda today as well, bringing that grand total up to 10 for HRC. That sort of difficult to ride RCV is uh, certainly making a name for itself here in Qatar. Yeah, thank you very much then for that, Jack. Of Yamaha's today so far with the long runs is uh, Fabio Quattararo and especially Maverick Vin Vinales um, knocking out 54s at will. Um, I would say every bit as impressive as Maverick's run is Paul Espargaro's run. Um, eight laps in the 54s, mid to high super impressive. Um, I got a chat with uh, the team manager, Alberto Puj, just before the show, you know, to give, a, give you an idea what he's thinking. He obviously is playing it down a little. He's saying there's a lot of fast guys out there. But what he did say is, we are happy because Paul likes the bike, you know, he's happy with the bike. He goes out there and without being, you know, without taking big risks, the lap time comes. So, for me, guys, it's looking very encouraging for Polo Spargaro's Honda debut. Simon, obviously last weekend there was a lot of wind out there in Qatar and it was quite difficult for riders, I think, to get a fair impression of their machines. But last night and today in particular, uh, the conditions seem to be a lot better. We've seen some ridiculously fast lap times over the last two days. Uh, what have track conditions been like today and are they ideal for setting fast times? I don't, I don't think I've seen such ideal track conditions, weather conditions uh, at the circuit ever since I've been here. And guys, just to give you an idea, I did crew chief interviews over the last days uh, to give us an idea of their job at the circuit, you know, how difficult it is. And they, all of them mentioned it's not just tra track layout that's difficult, it's conditions, changing conditions, because their job is to back to back components or bike setup and he said when well all of them said when conditions aren't consistent you get out there an hour later and it's different you can't get an answer on what you're testing you know it's not the same grip level or temperature or sand or wind change direction they're, they're talking about gearboxes having to change because of it's like moto 3 headwind or tailwind. so what i'm super pleased to see today is a a, a whole afternoon of really stable good conditions and and um, feels really good for the teams and you can see the work happening out there they're flat out back to backing things chassis and aero and everything you know old bikes new for yeah that's true lewis i mean it was interesting hearing what fabio had to say yesterday it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say again today after that fast lap time um obviously 
across one lap pace Fabio is in a good position but he wasn't so sure about the uh, 2021 chassis that Yamaha has brought for its riders here um, however when he spoke to journalists a little later last night he did seem a bit more upbeat about uh, the handling characteristics of the new frame Valentino Rossi was also upbeat as well and if you looked at the uh, the days we mentioned it yesterday he went there out there and did around 15 practice starts he did another 10 today at the start of today's running um, and, and as I said at the top of the show you can't win a race at the start but you can certainly lose it and Maverick Vinales certainly is earmarking that as one of his main concerns the qualifying and indeed the first lap of a race can almost make or break it for Yamaha yeah we saw this several occasions last year I think we're going to see it a lot more in 2021 Yamaha have really earmarked the front two rows of the grid as their territory they have to qualify there otherwise they're going to be in big issue in big trouble um Vinales said this yesterday I think Franco Morbidelli said something along the same lines as well uh, Franco was asked do you have a winning bike and he said yes he was asked do you have a bike in which you can fight on and he said no quite clearly so it's basically like going back to the old days of uh, Jorge Lorenzo with Yamaha you have to get the whole shot you have to go out be able to cut your own lines for this to be the most effective package on the grid yeah it's uh, to the first test uh, I improved very much uh, my pace uh, uh, the time attack and also the race pace is a lot better and uh, I feel good with the, with the bike I ride I ride quite well but uh, if uh, I compare with the top guys uh, they are a bit faster so we need uh, we need to work but uh, today was uh, a positive day also because we try something new from from the Yamaha we try a new chassis we try a new carling and I like I like the new stuff so this is very good also for for improve the bike during during the the season and it's a positive day I'm quite happy yeah, Valentino Rossi sounding uh, rather upbeat, most of the upbeat perhaps we've heard him so far over the course of this Qatar test. Those are live shots of the uh, box of his teammate, uh, Franco Morbidelli. Um, so Valentino Rossi feeling pretty happy and looking pretty happy from what we can see on the probably the most upbeat of the four. Yeah, exactly, which makes quite a big change compared to, I think, the first two days that Rossi was on the bike. He wasn't so sure whether Yamaha had made a big step, but yesterday there was certainly an improvement. He said he felt like a real rider again, so I think part of that is also the fact that Rossi is getting back up to speed himself becoming a bit more acclimatized to the MotoGP machine after such a long... Can you give us an idea what Franco has been working on and how it's been going? Basically, uh, a lot about settings for Franco's side. Of course, also new parts, new front fork, uh, testing, and uh, many, many settings, electronic, but also basically to get the feeling with the bike back as, as he had the last uh, season, basically at the end of the year. It works very well for him, so he has a very good uh, pace, I would say. Same sort of idea on Valentino. What has Valentino been working on? I saw a lot of new parts there. Uh, he's got two different chassis, but also the front mud guard, etc. What's he been working on and how has it been going? Uh, the first test, the first day was quite good. The second day he struggled a bit with feeling. Uh, the third day yesterday, actually, he said, I have much more grip than the second day. So uh, looking to that, he was very happy with everything we tested it yesterday. Saying that, he missed, of course, a little bit of speed, so he said uh, half a second for sure is, is in it. But um, yeah, overall, uh, if I would give it a number, we are at a seven and a half at the moment. But uh, it's not race day yet, you know. And about Yamaha, it looks like they've been working really hard off season and come here with a lot of parts. Are Yamaha happy? Are you happy with the work they've done? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, uh, we have, of course, two great seasons behind and uh, they work hard uh, to, to, to get us the best package uh, as we can have. And if you see the speeds and, and uh, of course, these boys are following each other. So we have the uh, same material as, as the factory team. So we are not complaining at all. The regulations this year are pretty simple. There's, there's basically no development. There are some very small things that the MotoGP uh, manufacturers can do. They, their existing engine spec, their existing bodywork spec, they can use those and they're allowed to assign different specifications to their new riders this year. But it has to be one of their old specifications. So they're not developing at all. The one exception is we've gone back to bodywork updates. Every manufacturer is allowed one bodywork update during the year and they can now have this this year. They can choose to start with the update or they can update during the year. The factories are using the current regulations to make their bikes better on the track and now it's adjustable uh, height and the suspension. That impacts on the aerodynamic bodywork regulations 
which were always uh, measured in a static way. Now they have to allow for the fact that the suspension height can be adjusted, so they have to change the rule about how to measure the bike. So all of this is taken care of in the, in the regulation update. The rule stayed the same about yellow flags, but we enforced it more strongly so that if a rider uh, passes a yellow flag, they must slow down for safety. The way we enforced this was to say that during practice, uh, any time you go past a yellow flag, that lap time is cancelled. You cannot improve your lap time with a yellow flag. So it's pretty simple. There's no reason not to slow down. In the past was two flags together, uh, a white flag with red cross plus a yellow red stripe flag. These two flags together mean the track is getting wet. And it's something we simplified uh, so that the white flag and red cross means raindrops. If the surface starts getting wet, that changes completely to the yellow and red stripe flag. So that yellow red flag now means the track is slippery for any reason. It can be rain, it can be oil, it can be a piece of debris. It's also much clearer to display on a light panel, this single flag. LED lights that are in, in conjunction with flags in, the, in all the corners. Many circuits like this one already have a system, but we want to improve that even more for next year. So during this year, we will have the LED light panels together with the flags uh, at most circuits and next year at every circuit. And that was MotoGP race director Mike Webb speaking about some of the rule changes that you may see coming to force uh, as this season unfolds. These are live shots of the Ducati uh, Lenovo team garage and now their pit wall. Jack Miller still holds the fastest time of the test so far, although Maverick Vinales, as you can now see, has gone fastest today uh, with a 1.53.2. That is the second fastest time of the week. That's quicker than he went and indeed than his teammate Fabio Quartararo uh, went yesterday. So it is still, if you look at the headline that time's advantage, Ducati uh, uh, in Qatar at the moment and it's very very difficult to judge for a number of reasons Neil not least because this is one of the stronger tracks on paper for Ducati but are we right to assume that they have a slight edge at the moment? I would say at this track yes they certainly do seem to have a bit of an edge um, because Miller has been up there, Zarco has been up there, Banyaya as well I think uh, Ducati and uh, Yamaha both look in really good shape so far at this test um, but uh, yeah I mean ridiculous times so far we've seen to put that into context I think the fastest lap time we had at the Qatar test a year ago was a 53.8 so we're you know seven tenths faster than that already with harder tyres exactly with harder tyres too so uh, yeah track conditions are really good as Simon said earlier in the show but uh, you know it's Peco very fast at one lap and also in the race simulation you had a very strong pace tell me uh, how was the, the day here at Qatar has been the, the best day for us because we worked very well and uh, we decided to buy. Uh, we uh, continue working, so this is very great for, uh, for us, for the work uh, we've done. And uh, I tried a time attack today and it uh, was quite well, but I didn't make the perfect lap. And uh, when I see 53.4, uh, I was happy, but uh, I'm more happy for the race simulation uh, because I started with the used tires of uh, the time attack. So tires went where uh, I pushed a lot with. So when I started the race simulation, I was making very good time, uh, very good laps. I was very happy. And then uh, we're seeing uh, where, we are, where we are losing time uh, with more laps. So we know now where to work with uh, used tires. And uh, today has been a very great day. And you guys at Ducati have been working with a lot of different configurations, also different packages as the Aero one. Have you made a decision uh, facing the race in two weeks here at Qatar? At the moment, I think uh, my choice for the race uh, is the bike when, uh, where I make the race simulation. So uh, we already decide. Uh, we have worked a lot in these four days. Uh, and uh, today I was very confident with everything on the bike. I think that the track was a little bit uh, less fast, uh, faster than yesterday. Uh, was a bit uh, slower because uh, I don't know the wind or I don't know, but uh, my pace was stronger than yesterday, so I'm very happy about that. And what, just to confirm, what was the bike uh, that you use in the race simulation? That one with the new aero package? Yeah, uh, I put the new aero package just for the race simulation, and uh, I feel it very good because it uh, helped me more. Uh, with the balance of the bike and uh, this is very great for, uh, for, uh, for us. Thank you very much, Peko. Um, we saw how good he could be on occasions last season, but not on a consistent basis. So how important for his own confidence and for Ducati is it that he starts well? 
yeah, it's big for Peko to uh, to start the season well, obviously, as it is for, for pretty much every rider. But um, I still think that uh, if Peko starts the season in a good way, he could go on to do uh, some interesting things. I wouldn't quite put him in the mix for championship contenders. I think Miller is clearly going to be the number one rider in that squad in terms of who's able to get results. Um, but I still think Peko could be able to spring a surprise, um, possibly be a consistent podium threat and maybe even fight for the occasional race win on occasion. And I like the way uh, he's been working in this test. OK, he went for the time attack at the end of the day, but he's been quite methodical. He's been under the radar a little bit, hasn't been always going for really fast times. And, um, you know, it does seem that Ducati's new aero package that they're using is um, is being greatly appreciated by both of its riders because Jack Miller was talking it up yesterday at how positive it is. And Pekka was saying he quite liked how it felt whenever he was doing his race simulation earlier today. So, yeah, positive positive news coming out of the Red Garage. Absolutely, and that translates across to the Premac team as well with the new aero package. We've seen Joan Zarka running that, and it is pretty clear that it is not slowing them down in a straight line. When we spoke to you yesterday on After the Flag, Joan Zarka had set the fastest, unofficially, it's not an official record because it's not a race weekend, but he'd set the big an advantage at some of the other circuits, like perhaps the Saxon Ring or places like that. But just how big a trump card is that going to, to be for them? in the first two Grand Prix of this season. Yeah, I mean, Ducati has a great record at this track. We heard Paolo Chiabatti speaking to uh, Jack Appleyard and Simon Crefar in the Facebook Live session earlier today, and he was saying that, yes, they have to kind of keep that in mind, that this is one of Ducati's strong tracks. So let's not get too carried away. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's a huge joker card to basically have. Um, you know, Honda, I think, two years ago, really jumped the gap. Uh, in terms of the top speed and Mark Marquez was able to basically stay with Andrea De Vizioso anytime he was uh, in his slipstream on a straight but uh, here I think yeah as you said Ducati generally have around 5k's is out and we can now take a look at the standings then with now one day to go uh, at the end of this Qatar test as you can see on the combined times Jack Miller remains fastest the 153.1 for him uh, that he set yesterday the fastest time of today was set by Maverick Vinales a 153.2 uh, we'll hope to show you those uh, in just a moment here they come Fabio Quartararo not going faster today but still third overall ahead of Franco Morbidelli and Pecco Bagnaia uh, Alicia Spargro stays in sixth position so another strong day for Aprilia ahead of the two Suzuki of Joan Mir and Alex Rins with Joan Zarco in ninth, although he didn't go quicker today. Paula Sparkro uh, also failing to improve on yesterday, but another positive day for him despite a crash. Valentino Rossi, his best day so far. He was inside the top 10 today, but 11th overall, ahead of Takaki Nakagami and Stefan Bradl, who was back on the Honda today. Jorge Martin, fastest rookie, just ahead of Enea Bastianini, with the KTMs continuing to languish down the timesheet. Uh, Oliveira and Binder. Alex Marquez, who, uh, as you have already heard, uh, cut his day short due to a crash that injured his toe. Uh, he was in 18th ahead of Danilo Petrucci and the next of the Yamaha test riders. Uh, Luca Marini, 21st, ahead of uh, another Yamaha test bike uh, with Ika Laquota in 23rd. Danny Pedroza, Sylvain Gintoli next up ahead of Lorenzo Savadori, who also had a crash today. Uh, the third of the Yamaha test bikes. Again, we can't tell you who rode that because Crab Crutchlow and uh, Kota Nazani have been switching between bikes, but that bike was the 27th fastest overall today ahead of Michele Pirro for Ducati and Takuya Suda for Suzuki. And looking at the fastest sectors overall, it's looking pretty good from a Yamaha point of view. Fastest in each of the first three sectors. Um, and that's going to be very, very encouraging for them. But again, if we look through all th four sectors, Neil, just how close it is between different manufacturers, no more than nine thousandths of a second in it in any sector of the lap. Yeah, you can see how well the Yamaha is performing in sector two, occupying each of the three spaces there and also in sector three. Absolutely. Fabio Quattararo, fastest of all in that third sector. A Yamaha 1, 2, 3 in that sector with Peko Bagnaia, perhaps unsurprisingly fastest of all uh, in the fourth sector. We'll be bringing you some practice starts uh, very, very shortly as the riders head out in a couple of minutes' time to go out and do um, some practice starts. Um, so what are our overall um, sort of assessments as we look back on the times uh, then, Neil, from, uh, from today? Of course, as I mentioned, the combined times still have Jack Miller in front, but today a Yamaha 1, 2, 3. So once again, proving that in terms of their outright pace over one lap, there is nothing wrong with that M1. Yeah, Yamaha in really good shape over one flying lap. That certainly has been proved today. And yes, yeah, Brad Binder was far from happy yesterday. I mean, he said that, uh, um, yeah, he basically is struggling to get the bike stopped. He's not able to run the lines that he feels are the most effective uh, for that bike and for his riding style. And uh, yeah, I mean, the times aren't very encouraging. Also, if you look at the pace as well, I mean, Brad was really quite far down in terms of uh, the race pace that he was doing yesterday. Um, he wasn't so consistent. He just wasn't really very fast. It was over a second per lap, more or less, slower than the Yamaha guys. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just one track. We have to remember that 
Um, we're not really having a normal pre-season, so we haven't got a bigger picture of how the KTM is performing over a different variety of tracks. But certainly here at Qatar, it does seem that they're struggling. And it was interesting last night to hear Miguel Oliveira complaining of uh, KTM's inability to get the most out of the front tyre that Mitchell had brought here this weekend. Yeah, very, very interesting indeed. And Brad Binder in particularly looks like he's been struggling to get that bike stopped. Uh, into corner. It, it, we still don't know if we've actually seen the full story, as I mentioned, from KTM so far, but um, from Miguel Oliveira's point of view, as you say, he, he doesn't seem awfully happy, and no factory, no matter how much they're holding back, surely they wouldn't look to be 1.4 seconds off the pace at this stage on purpose. Yeah, certainly not, but um, I think we have to look at the bigger picture. KTM has lost Paula Spargerl, who was riding at the absolute top of his game over the last year. He's basically been the leader of that project for the previous four years, so that's a big, big... Um, that is obviously going to take a bit of time for those riders to merge new relationships that they have. And uh, on Brad Binder's side of the garage, I mean, his crew chief, Andres Madrid, this is his first year working in MotoGP. And he was asked last weekend what it was like um, comparing to work on a MotoGP machine after working in Moto2. And he said it was basically the equivalent of swapping a Game Boy for a PlayStation 10. So it's a big, big adjustment for him to make as well. So I think when you factor in all of these things, it's understandable that KTM are a little bit off the pace. I wouldn't be pushing the panic button just yet. But considering they won the last race of 2020, we were certainly expecting a bit more from them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we shouldn't forget as well that they didn't exactly figure too high in testing last season. That's why I think it came as such a, an amazing shock to many uh, that Brad Binder won the Czech Grand Prix in the manner that he did because there'd been none near El sign until he set such incredible race pace from, from the back of the field uh, in Jerez. Just how much potential that KTM had. Um, but it is interesting, isn't it, when we look at the rookies from last season who, by and large, had very, very impressive seasons, Brad Binder and Alex Marquez. Both of them are finding it much more difficult second time around. As you evolve in your career in MotoGP and you go into your second season, much more is expected of you. And both of them are finding life tough going at the moment. Yeah, yeah, they, they definitely are. I mean, uh, not encouraging the timesheets for, for either rider, Brad down in 16th and Miguel in 18th. Um, it's a tough time, but I still think that uh, when we get back to Europe, when we get to Portimao, when we get to Jerez, I still think KTM will, will definitely be up there among the, the, the quicker names. It's just that this track in Qatar, they've never particularly had a great race in Qatar. Um, we didn't race here last year, of course. They don't have any race data from this track from a year ago. Um, yeah, I still think uh, we should cut them a little bit of slack and not, uh, not go overboard with uh, the panic. Yeah, here is, here is Brad Binder, who, uh, as I say, finished 16th today. Not a lot to be uh, off in your first test on a bike as notoriously difficult to get on with as a Honda. And uh, what was also impressive was I think he was around six tenths a second per lap faster than he was on Sunday. So he's making giant strides day by day on that bike, learning really quickly. And uh, he feels he's already found the limits. Well, he went over the limits today, of course, when he's uh, breaking in a straight line, but he's still finding a little bit of issue uh, in corner speed. He feels compared to Bradle um, that he's not quite found the ideal way to ride the bike there, as we see shots of Paul uh, coming back from his crash earlier in the day. Um, but so much to be positive about um, if you're Paul Espargo at the moment. Absolutely. Jack Miller has said that he sees Paul Espargo as the standout rider so far uh, from this Qatar test. He's been very, very impressive as he learns that Honda, a bike that has proven notoriously difficult um, for anyone other than Mark Marquez, really, to uh, get results out of uh, in recent years. But Paul Espargo um, showing every sign that he can go... One time attack. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's difficult to judge them at the moment. Um, it, you have to say, when you look at the times generally, the Honda in the hands of Takaki Nakagami Lights Marquez has looked pretty decent when it has been running. Of course, they have they've had many problems uh, with crashes over the course of this week, but the general signs seem fairly positive for them in terms of the pace of the bike. Certainly positive signs when we look at a prettier by and large, even though we had a crash for either rider today. Both a uh, so question, I suppose, we can still pose at a prettier because that was what dogged them uh, last year, I suppose. Um, the pace certainly seems to have picked up. The last thing they need is more technical problems holding them back. Yeah, Leash was pretty downbeat when we spoke to him yesterday on this show. Um, I think he missed out around three hours of yesterday's running because of a major technical issue. And that was clearly like a big frustration for him because he was coming into yesterday in such a positive frame of mind after two sterling, in fact, three sterling days uh, last weekend where he was one of the fastest guys, one of the most consistent guys as well. Um, perhaps it wasn't such a bad thing that his uh, big expectations after last weekend were tempered somewhat brought a bit back down to earth because we know that well sometimes when Aprilia are trying to bring new things in um, it's not always the most reliable um, of bikes and we have seen uh, technical issues basically halt the Spargo in racing situations before um, but 
you know, he was still sixth fastest yesterday in spite of all those issues. He was fifth fastest again today. So the speed and the performance certainly isn't lacking. I think, um, yeah, it's more just a case of uh, whether the bike can hold together and as far as can, can be considered, you're still trying to try new things with your riding, how you uh, attack certain corners. Um, it must be so frustrating when you have to sit in the garage, but I don't think he has been beset by technical issues today as he was yesterday. Um, so I'm sure Alish will be a little more, little more upbeat than he was uh, one day ago. Yeah, 56 laps for Alicia Spargo today, which is uh, pretty good going as well. When you compare that to the fastest rider of the day, Maverick Vinales, he did 58. So clearly plenty of running uh, for Aprilia. Here's a shot of Jack Miller. And if you know Jack, you know what's coming next. <laughs> there it is. Uh, parking a bike as only Jack Miller can uh, down at the Jakati uh, pit box. Um, and a high five. So it much too soon from him. No, we'll, uh, we'll follow his progress over the course of the season. Uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the world champions now, essentially the world team's champions, and that is Suzuki. Uh, and Juan Mir uh, getting uh, ready for his title defence. Um, and they've been, I suppose, under the radar so far when we look at Suzuki as we uh, see live shots now of Enea Bastianini pulling in. Uh, we'll maybe talk about him a bit later on because he's been very, very impressive again today. And as you can see, his team have been very impressed with him. Um, but as I mentioned, Suzuki going under the radar. And in many ways, we're not supposedly, supposedly going to see the best of Suzuki, perhaps until we get back to Europe, because this isn't a circuit that favours them. Although Juan Mir did explore... Not su successful as uh, yesterday. Feeling was uh, different, but that's uh, a good thing during the test to have uh, different feelings and try to understand why with uh, everything similar we cannot have uh, the same feeling and enjoy in the same way. But it's clear that uh, it was planned to do uh, a long run to prepare uh, the race weekend. And uh, I didn't want to do too many laps to be ready for this long run. But we have good work to do. And in the end, I did the more laps uh, even than the days before. So I'm kind of tired. And I would say happy that still strong work and uh, many good information for, for the future. How did you feel during the, the longer runs, the race simulation that you've done today? Do you feel like you have a, a competitive pace? need to compare with uh, with the others but i think i'm not so far i can find still some better feeling to be few tenths faster and then it will be very interesting so let's see um, i think i did much better than what uh, i could do uh, in the past last year so that's why it's uh, a progress away and i'm still pushing is that as a result of you or the bike or a mixture of both? The fact that you feel you've got a, a better pace now? Sorry? The fact that you have a, a better pace, do you think that's you or the new bike that you've jumped on or maybe a mix of both? It's coming together. When I deserve to have a better bike, it means that I'm going fast enough. And uh, I understood how to ride this Ducati bike. So I think, uh, as I say, compared last year, both things are together to, to control better this race pace. Thank you, Johan. Thank you to Sean Zarco. Thank you to Jack Appleyard speaking uh, to uh, the Frenchman down there in part for me. These are live shots once again uh, from the Los Angeles National Circuit of the fastest rider of the day. Mar one tenth faster or one and a half tenths faster over a flying lap. Then, it, you know, that could be worth one full row on the grid, maybe even more. Um, because the, the margins are so fine in MotoGP at the moment. But it does appear that Suzuki, you know, it hasn't got the pace of Yamaha over one flying lap. No, it doesn't look like that. Although uh, their race pace, once again, was pretty good uh, over the course of the day. Looking at Juan Mir's long run pace, or the longer runs that he did over the course of the day, he was pretty consistently uh, in the 154. So, also optimistic. Yeah, overall happy because today we we really make some some improvements. We we play a little bit with the geometry of the bike for the first day in in this uh, in this test, and uh, I found a solution that allowed me to be fast with uh, used tires. So and give me more stability. So I'm very happy. Unfortunately, I made a very small crash, but uh, enough to to broke a little bit the bike and, and not able to repair in time for the race simulation. Anyway, I think um, we have to be very happy and proud today. Everybody has been very fast. The track wasn't uh, like yesterday, but we managed to go in 53 half, which is a very very fast lap time. I think it's. Uh, almost a second faster than last year so we have to be happy we have a very good speed also with used tires so hopefully 
tomorrow the weather allows us to, to keep trying and I will try race simulation again. So yeah, overall satisfied about, uh, about the test so far. We always been fighting for top five every single day. Uh, so yeah, I'm very happy. You said you have a, a good pace with used tyres. Just how good is it? Yeah, I mean, I can stay for uh, many laps in 54 uh, low, 54 uh, half. Today I start at uh, 3 in the afternoon with uh, very, very high temperatures. And I managed also to ride with a uh, hard rear tyre in 54, which is very, very fast. And we'll, uh, we, it means that uh, we will be also competitive in, uh, in uh, hot conditions in another circuits during the season because uh, Portimao and Jerez will be very, very hot, I think. So, yes, overall I'm, I'm satisfied. I think in a race simulation we can stay uh, in a a lot of laps in, in 54 half, so I, I I hope tomorrow I can I can prove it. Obviously on race day, the conditions here in Qatar will be very different after the Moto2 race always affects the grip levels. Yeah, it can are, be. Are you still confident that despite those change of circumstances, Aprilia can still be competitive? So, you, you never know after Moto2 what can happen, but obviously what we were looking uh, today to improve was the stability of the bike uh, uh, with the used tyre, and sincerely I, was, I, I managed to be to ride in, in 53 and also in 54 low quite uh, more easy than the other days. So, in improving the stability and the rear grip, uh, it means that when the track someday here after Moto2 or maybe in other tracks um, will be more slippery, we are able to, to maintain a good level, so this is why I'm very satisfied about today. Yes, was uh, not the funniest one because we had many things to test. Uh, was not um, so funny because you know uh, we had a really good pace at one moment where I felt really good on the bike, but we needed to change settings, uh, fork setting, rear shock setting. So it was not so great today, but um, also at the end of time attack, I just went with the medium rear. Old one, the feeling was not good, then we swapped directly to the soft, so I was impressed with the potential of the soft and my lap was not that great. But, uh, you know, 53 is already a, a big lap, so yeah, step by step we are testing many things and we know which one is great and which one is, which one is more difficult to use. Do you know a direction on the on the chassis yet? You're obviously testing it again today. Do you feel comfortable with it? Yeah, yeah, I feel, uh, we can say I feel comfortable because honestly, uh, the pace that we had is great, the time attack is great, so that direction is is really good. So uh, let's see if we can make another step on the um, on the last day. And uh, yeah, uh, I, feel, uh, I feel ready. Tomorrow it's time to make a race simulation. So let's see, but I feel that uh, we can do well. As you say, just one day left now. Do you feel ready to go racing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. honestly, right now we are doing tests and looking at the pace, but I think uh, it's not really necessary to look at everybody's pace because now the track is, you know, after five days of, of MotoGP, the tarmac is full black of, of rubber. So uh, even if our pace will be amazing, for the race will be totally different with Dunlop rubber, Moto3, Moto2. So I think it's just uh, an idea and go home happy. But as soon as we will be back, will be a totally different story. And how do you prepare for that? The fact that the track conditions will be totally different. Is there any way of making sure that you're ready for that situation? Yeah, I, I feel that uh, we are ready for this situation, but you never know. Uh, maybe the track will, be, will get exactly the same much worse, maybe better, I don't think so. But uh, you need to think about this situation of, uh, you know, with the Moto2, Moto2 and Moto3, the, ti the, um, the tires will ride in a different way. So um, yeah, let's see what we, what we can do. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you. Yeah, we never uh, put a tire in at all. Like the only software we used was for the race sim. Got that out of the way. Um, wasn't too bad, uh, you know. It's always the same race simulation. It's nothing like being in the race, but um, no, I got through the jobs we needed to get through today. It was um, we had quite a big day, you know. The boys had to do a few changes on the bike, so we spent a bit of time in the garage, just a couple of little things that uh, needed to be changed in order for the race, sort of thing. But uh, apart from that, no, a really positive day. You know, I did the lap time on the same tyre as yesterday. Uh, at the end there, I just had to go out and check a few temperatures on the bike and. Um, and when I went out, I seen Frankie, so I sort of tagged on the back of him on, on the 15-lap old tyre and fed it to him. Felt good on it and was able to do my best lap of the, of the day. Um, so 
Oh, pretty happy. And talk us through the, the race simulation. As you say, it doesn't really simulate a race, but what was it? How did it feel like? How did the bike behave as you'd hoped it would do? Yeah, yeah, the bike was uh, was pretty good. Um, you know, as I said, the race simulation, you can never, you know, you're just out there sort of circulating on your own, just trying to stick to a lap time kind of thing. It wasn't too bad. I sort of like always happens when you're doing a race simulation you're not really thinking about tyre cons consumption or anything like that you're just trying to do the best you can and uh, yeah the last sort of four laps it kind of fell off the edge of a cliff there but um, I think there's some things we can do a little bit and set up just to try and gain a little bit better uh, let's say longevity out of the tyres but uh, as I said in all a, a positive day for us um, glad I got that out of the way and uh, we're going to have a more chill day tomorrow has it given you a, a better idea of where you feel you are heading into the, the opening round? Yeah, I think so. But um, as I've said before, again, my race sim was, you know, lap times were under lap record uh, that was set up quite a while ago. It's never going to be the same on race day, you know, after the Dunlop rubber's been laid down and everything like that. So you're just sort of getting a feel for how the bike's sort of taking lap by lap and that kind of thing, full fuel load and everything. But in terms of times, you can't really look at them too much, especially when there's that much Michelin rubber on the ground and whatnot. So, um, I'm, like I said, just happy that I could complete them, felt good on the bike, felt, you know, didn't really get tired at all. So that's a positive and uh, no, I'm keen for the race now. Yeah, just one day to go, not long to wait now, Jack. Cheers, mate. Exactly. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Well, I think uh, still we have a lot of work to do. So we know we can be very fast at one lap and on the rhythm, but we know our weak points, so we are working very hard on that. Still remains one day, so I will be very concentrated to improve my race start and also the first laps of the tyre, which is really important with the fuel time. Tomorrow I should do a long run, especially like, like race long run. Today I did few long runs, but not really a race long run. And we will see. But anyway, you know, at the end, what we need uh, is trying to start super fast and try to be P1 on the first lap and pushing like a hell. Our bike is working well on that area, so it's our, our main point. We've seen you again today doing practice start after yeah. practice start after practice start. Do you feel you've made progress with it? Yeah, we are making a lot of progress and uh, this keeps us really happy and also really motivated because we know we have the speed, we know we have a good rhythm for sure to fight for the race, but now we need to start well. So little by little we are improving and we need to make a step. How do you improve that? Is it with your technique or something set up wise with the bike? At the moment we are working a lot on the setup because we are not yet on wh where we want to, to be and then we want to work with the technique. So we have three, four days still remaining to, to practice stars and then we will be ready. Just finally, it looked like a busy day for you as well. Three different bikes in the garage yeah. I saw. <laughs> what did you manage to take out of that? Yeah, it was 2020, 2021 and then something different. <laughs> Anyway, you have to try everything, and today I think we try a lot of things. For sure, I could not concentrate a lot to, to be fast on the track, but at the end I made two, three laps that I really was on, on the point, and the bike was working well, and we could ride quite fast, and this is always very positive. But what remains me really happy is that I just ride the, the new bike, and I felt quite good on it. Well, P1 today, that's not bad. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow, uh, Mav. Sunday, Sunday race. <laughs> See you then. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I feel I feel pretty ready. There's always room to improve, and there's always uh, there are always things to do and things to that need to get better. But I feel yeah, I feel quite ready. What do you feel there's, there's still to work on tomorrow? Well, tomorrow um, we're gonna have to try some some tires. We're gonna have to see how I go in a long run. So uh, usual usual uh, things. But um, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm working with my team and I'm, I'm trying to, to bond even more and I'm trying to understand even more the, the secrets of the bike, uh, trying to react uh, according to the conditions. So we've been trying different settings today uh, during the day and the night uh, to see how they behave in, in some conditions. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty. I say pretty happy because it's testing, but uh, actually, I'm very happy because the lap time was was great and and the feeling is good.